What if someone told you Yeshua, Jesus, expects obedience from us to make it into the kingdom? What would you say? However, the better question we should all be asking is, what did he say? Let's talk about it. Hey, this is Off the Cuff, and I'm Steve from TorahFamily.org. It wasn't too long ago, I was with some friends working on some projects. For a long while, I had some safety glasses on that had yellow lenses on them. After a long time, I took them off and was suddenly taken by surprise at the color change. I got so used to the yellow that it was the normal for me. Then, when I saw reality, it completely threw me off. Likewise, for most of us, we've been told all our lives that we can't keep the law. However, when we let the reality of the Scripture speak, we see Deuteronomy 30.11 and Philippians 4.13 says otherwise. We've been told all our lives that God's law is basically evil and cruel. However, when we let the reality of the Scripture speak, we see Deuteronomy 7, 9 and Romans 7, verse 12 says otherwise. We've been told all our lives how God's law was brought to an end by Yeshua and He nailed it to the cross. However, when we let the reality of the Scripture speak, we see Deuteronomy 5, 29 and Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, says otherwise. We've been told all our lives how God's law was a burden. However, when we let the reality of the Scriptures speak, we see Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and 1 John chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, says otherwise. But just like with me wearing those yellow safety glasses, we get accustomed to what we see and hear from others. And it becomes the reality we accept as truth. In fact, because we accepted it for so long, it makes it very difficult to accept anything else as truth. I mean, let's face it, no one wants to imagine the thought we've believed a lie, especially a lie in regards to the scriptures. And overcoming What we've been brought up to believe can be a difficult task. But if we let the scriptures speak for themselves and we're honest with ourselves, those lies are brought to light and challenged. I know some would say, well, I know lots of scriptures that shows the law of God has been done away with. But most all of those verses people use for that argument are taken from the writings Paul gave writings that Peter warned people were distorting. I would encourage you to watch our teaching simply titled, The Writings of Paul. It's only 20 minutes, and I really believe you'll find it of value. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8 says, The word of Yahweh stands forever, which happens to be a verse Peter quoted, by the way, and said it was the same word preached to his readers in 1 Peter chapter 1. So, I want to take us down a small journey here through the scriptures, a journey that asks, what if we were taught wrong? A journey that shows scriptures defending the Torah from the New Testament. Now I know, trust me, there'll be something in you wanting to defend your view that says the law's been done away with. All I'm asking is that you let the scriptures speak for themselves. Let's begin. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Now those are Yeshua's words, not mine. Now I know some would say, Yeah, but Steve, Jesus specifically said what commands were to be followed by Moses in verses 18 through 20. 
and this is true, as seen here in those verses. However, my first question in return is, then what happened to the faith alone theory? With Yeshua's response here to what must be done to get eternal life, the faith alone theory is out the window. Next, so do you really believe these are the only commands were to follow to inherit eternal life? The issue is, people assume Yeshua stopped on his own when speaking here. Has it ever dawned on you that he was interrupted? Verse 20 shows the man interjecting. Besides this, if you believe these are the only commands needed to inherit eternal life, then not only do you have to throw out the two greatest commands Yeshua gave, and we'll cover those in a minute, you also have to totally dismiss what the Jerusalem Council gave in Acts 15, verses 19 through 21, which I cover in detail in our teaching simply titled, The Acts 15 Dilemma, and also in part two of our series titled, The Dangers of Torahism. Now, please consider what Yeshua said when he was asked the exact same question from the expert in the law. Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. So, Yeshua just answered the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life, with these two commands. These two commands break down the Ten Commandments, those that apply to loving Yahweh, and those that apply to loving our fellow man. The Ten Commandments break down all the rest. The expert in the law knew this, and so did Yeshua. Thus, we're to pursue all that Moses gave as shown by Yeshua in Matthew 22:40. Now, I've heard some people say, but Jesus never tells people to take a sacrifice to the temple, which would fall under those of loving Yahweh with all your heart. However, that belief of Yeshua never telling people to make sacrifices isn't true. After healing the leper, he told him to go show himself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded, as seen here in Matthew 8, 4. And we see the same in the account of the ten lepers seen here in Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. So, Yeshua did tell people to make sacrifices at the temple. Yeshua taught and instructed people to follow what Moses gave. Thus, his instructions to the disciples in Matthew 23 to obey Moses. And then he instructs his disciples to teach the Gentiles to do the same as he taught them in Matthew 28. That was virtually his last instruction given to them when he told them to go and wait for the Holy Spirit. Thus, showing even after his death and resurrection, he was still instructing his disciples to obey Moses. He didn't repeal any of his instructions. This is so important to note. Everything he said and instructed was in alignment with Moses. Neither before or after his death and resurrection, Yeshua never said the commands given through Moses was coming to an end at his death and resurrection. This should speak volumes to us. I mean, think about it. To declare the law of Moses was no longer going to be applicable to the followers of Yahweh would have been a massive change. A massive change. And yet, he said nothing of the like to his followers. If he had, it would have been huge, especially to those he was preaching to in the land of Israel at that time. So, this huge doctrine change that says the law of Moses was done away with at Yeshua's death and resurrection is missing text from Yeshua himself in declaring this doctrine to be truth. Since Yeshua didn't declare it to be, 
How can it be followed? Over and over, we see where obedience is a requirement of the believer. Now, not for salvation, but rather giving evidence of our salvation. Yeshua reveals this in John 14 and 15. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Obedience. John 14, 21. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Again, obedience. John 14, 23. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Again, obedience. So if we are of him, we will love him. And if we love him, we will obey him. And to those who obey, he says, My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. This goes right in line with what Yeshua said in answering the expert in the law from Luke 10, 25 through 28, when he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Thus, we obey out of our love for him. In return, Yahweh and Yeshua makes their home with us for eternity. Plus, look at verse 24 in John 14. This goes in perfect alignment with what Moses said in Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 and 18. Yeshua was showing he's the prophet likened unto Moses, and were to do what he says. What's one of his commands? To obey Moses, as shown in Matthew 23. Anyone who doesn't will be cut off, as seen here in the next chapter, John 15. Thus, his words for us to remain in him. And we remain in him by living in obedience to him, as seen in verse 10. John 15, 10. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. Now, compare these words with Yeshua to what we see from Moses, Deuteronomy 7, 9. Keeping his commands keeps us in his love. Deuteronomy 11, 1. Again, keeping his commands keeps us in his love. Deuteronomy 11.13 Again, keeping his commands keeps us in his love. Deuteronomy 11.22 Keeping his commands keeps us in his love. Deuteronomy 19 verse 9 Keeping his commands keeps us in his love. Deuteronomy 30.16 Keeping his commands keeps us in his love. Now, consider Luke 11, 27 and 28. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Yeshua said we would be blessed if we hear and obey the word of Yahweh. This is exactly what Moses gave us in Deuteronomy 11:26. Through 28, as seen here, that we would be blessed if we obey the commands of Yahweh, or we will be cursed if we disobey them. So, as always, there are two paths to choose from obedience or disobedience, the blessing or curse, thus, the curse of the law that Yeshua came to save us from. We expound on that more in our teaching simply titled, the curse of the law, the law of sin and death, and under the law. Regarding these verses in Deuteronomy 11, consider how Yeshua paralleled them in John chapter 5, verse 14. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, 
See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. Implying what? Implying the man was an invalid because of sin. While we know from what is seen just five chapters later in chapter 9, verses 1 through 3, that bad things don't always happen because of sin. This verse in chapter 5 does show it can happen, though, and it goes in alignment with what we see from Moses. And it seems that even the disciples understood that from John chapter 9. But again, the focus of Yeshua's ministry on earth was all about teaching the Torah. All of it and giving full understanding to it in comparison to what the Pharisees and teachers of the law were doing. Please, consider our teaching titled, Spirit and Truth, for more on that. Yeshua said the disciples were clean because of the Word, seen here in John 15, verse 3. And this is why we see Peter saying the exact same thing in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 says, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. So, how do we purify ourselves? By obeying the word, just as Yeshua said in John 15. And this verse in 1 Peter is in the very same context we referenced earlier where Peter quotes from Isaiah about the word, standing forever. Notice how Peter is equating the truth with the word that stands forever. Thus, the Torah, just as Yeshua taught it himself. Obedience to the truth, the word, the Torah. Obedience. Now, when it comes to obedience, look what Peter says in chapter 4, 1 Peter 4, 17. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God, and if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Well, what is the gospel of God? It's the same gospel that Yeshua himself preached as noted in 2 Thessalonians 1.8. 2 Thessalonians 1.8 says, He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Both of these verses show punishment will come on those who don't obey the gospel. For more on this, you can see our teaching, the gospel. Remember, Paul himself said in Romans 15, 18, I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done. Again, obedience to God. And Paul says virtually the same thing in Romans 16. Romans 16 verse 26, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations might believe and obey him. Again, obedience to God. Paul is following the command given to the disciples in Matthew 28 to teach the Gentiles to obey what he commanded them, to obey Moses, as instructed in Matthew 23. The focus is to obey Yahweh through his commands, just as Paul wrote in Romans 2.13. Romans 2.13 says, For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. I get it. When we're told something for so long, it's hard to even consider a different perspective. But, as you can see, the New Testament is filled with verses that discuss our need to obey Yahweh's commands. And there's so many more we haven't even touched in this teaching. In conclusion, please consider Philippians 2.12 Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do you see what Paul is saying? Obedience is working out your salvation 
through fear and trembling. Where does Paul get that from? The Torah. Deuteronomy 6.12 So that you, your children, and their children after them may fear Yahweh your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. And Deuteronomy 10.12 And now, O Israel, what does Yahweh your God ask of you but to fear Yahweh your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Thus, we work out our salvation, obey, in the fear of Yahweh. Remember, believing doesn't make you a Christian. Obedience does. Even the demons believe. Well, that's all I have. Think about it. Pray about it. But more than anything, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Until next time, Shalom.